Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation on how to transition easily to a whole foods plant-based diet. My name is Jenny Lusby and I'm a medical student up in rainy Scotland at the University of Edinburgh. Firstly, I would just like to thank VegFest UK for giving me the space to talk to you all and also Plant-Based Health Professionals UK for allowing me to present on their behalf. So just to tell you a bit about me and why I'm doing this talk and what you can hopefully expect. I made the decision to become vegan around four years ago and so I remember the challenges associated with cutting out all animal products quite well. My aim of this presentation is to really provide those of you at the beginning of your plant-based journey with the essential information surrounding a plant-based diet. In particular, I have tried to target those of you who feel maybe hesitant that they can make that transition and feel that going animal product free overnight is too big a jump. I really hope that by the end of this presentation, I'll, I will have provided the encouragement and reassurance you need to make the decision to cut out animal products. As a slight disclaimer, the advice I give may not be directly applicable to everyone, but I hope that the main themes can be transferred to your life, at least in part. In creating this presentation, I do recognise that there is a huge amount of privilege in being able to actively choose certain food products over others, and that not everyone shares this same privilege. There are many reasons why plant-based eating may not be as accessible to some, such as financial freedom or even time freedom, which are often linked. Therefore, I do not think that every individual has the same opportunity to make a change like this, which is why I feel so passionately about us utilising our own individual privileges to the best of our ability. We can only do what we can do. So in this presentation, I do use my own personal experiences and the literature to hopefully provide some guidance in the transition from a diet filled with animal products to one that is healthily based around plants. Just to quickly outline the main topics of this presentation, I'll talk a bit about the rise in veganism and what this might mean for the vegan diet. I'll then go on to distinguish the vegan diet from the whole food plant-based diet and why we should all strive for the latter. I'll talk a bit about the health benefits of the whole food plant-based diet and discuss any associated challenges and hopefully provide some tips and advice to try and help alleviate some of these challenges. I'll then go on to talk a bit about the essential nutrients that some are concerned about missing out on in a vegan diet. And finally, I'll talk about easy ways to implement the whole food plant based diet, including dietary transition tips based on your current fruit and vegetable intake. So is veganism on the rise? Well, the statistics would say yes. Google searches relating to veganism increased sevenfold between 2014 and 2019. This shows that interest around the movement is growing, which is a great opportunity to educate around the reasons for choosing a vegan lifestyle and also the benefits that it can have. The number of vegans in Great Britain quadrupled in the same period and now just over 1% of the UK population is thought to be vegan. This opens up a huge market for vegan and plant-based alternatives, as can be seen by the multi-billion pound industry. 4.4 billion euros equates to roughly just under 4 billion pounds and this is expected to almost double in value by 2025. Of course food companies are becoming more increasingly aware of this and so this has resulted in the number of new trademarks for vegan alternatives soaring. This of course comes with pros and cons. It is great in my opinion that plant-based alternatives to convenience and comfort foods are becoming more readily available. However, the part that worries me is an, over, is an over-reliance of these type of foods for two main reasons. Firstly, so-called vegan plant-based alternatives are still generally much higher in fat, sugar, salt and refined carbohydrates than if you were to eat a whole food plant-based alternative. This is, in sim this is in a similar way that consuming a high amount of non-vegan processed junk food containing animal products is also very harmful. Secondly, vegan alternatives are often not as nutritionally dense as their whole food counterpart. And the reason this is harmful is that if there's too much of a reliance on these foods, 
then you would be consuming more of the nutritionally sparse foods in place of eating the nutritionally dense foods. And so over a, long, a prolonged period of time, you could be missing out on vital nutrients. Therefore, the rise in vegan junk foods could present much the same problem as animal products equivalents in terms of the health ramifications if an over-reliance occurs. I think one of the wonderful things about individuals switching to a plant-based diet is the health possibilities associated with more whole food plant-based eating. So what is a whole food plant-based diet and is it the same as a vegan diet? The short answer is not necessarily. A vegan diet is classified only by being devoid of animal products, as you can see in the table. So in th simple terms, a vegan diet does not contain meat, seafood, eggs, dairy and other animal products like honey. However, the levels of other food groups within the diet are completely unspecified. Therefore, a vegan diet can be low in whole grains and vegetables and rely more on refined carbohydrates like white pasta. This means a vegan diet is not necessarily healthy or the same as a diet based around whole foods and plants. But similarly, it could also be a diet which is the same as a whole food plant based diet. But I'm using the terms plant based to mean a whole food plant based diet to be more specific. As you can see, there are little stars next to the crosses on the meat and seafood, eggs, dairy and highly processed foods in the whole food plant based diet category. This is because there is a slight disagreement about whether a whole food plant based diet can contain small amounts of animal products or not. But for the purposes of this presentation, I'll be using the more traditional definition, which does not contain animal products, so we can relate it to the vegan diet better. A whole food plant based diet is one that mainly contains plant foods which have been minimally processed to maintain their nutrient density. These diets are heavy on whole grain carbohydrates like whole grain flour, bread, pasta, oats, quinoa, buckwheat, etc. Fruits and vegetables, legumes and pulses like beans, lentils and chickpeas, etc. Nuts and seeds and only contain very small amounts of highly processed foods. So what does a whole food plant based diet look like? Well, Plant Based Health Professionals UK have released the Plant Based Eat Well Guide, which is an adaptation of Public Health England's Eat Well Guide. It aims to show what a plant based diet looks like and involves. As you can see, it is heavy on whole grain carbohydrates and full of, veg of fruit and vegetables, which together make up the main bulk of the diet. There are also some plant based proteins, plant based dairy alternatives, small amounts of added oils and fats, and processed foods. So why are whole grains better for us than refined carbohydrates? A lot of the goodness in grains comes from the outer layer of the grain called the bran and the inner part called the germ. During refinement to make our food into the white processed alternatives that we see in the shops, the bran and the germ are usually removed partly or entirely. This means that up to 75% of the nutrients within the grain can be lost. Some of the important nutrients in whole grain is the high fibre content, which is really important for gut health as fibre helps food move along the digestive tract more quickly and readily and also helps to feed good gut bacteria in the process. Additionally, because whole grain food products have not been refined as much before we eat them, our bodies have to do a bit more work in breaking down the food into energy. And this means that the glycemic index of whole grains is usually much lower than that of their refined alternatives. The benefits of eating foods with a low glycemic index is that they produce slow release carbohydrates into the blood rather than a spike, which means our energy levels can be kept at a more consistent level for a longer period of time and we can feel fuller for longer. Fruit and vegetables are filled with essential vitamins and minerals that are essential for our bodies to function well. Studies have shown that those who eat plenty of fruit and veg every day have a lower risk of developing many diseases. I'll talk a bit more about these benefits in the upcoming slides, but it is important to note that the British Dietetics Association state that eating more fruit and veg is the second most important cancer prevention strategy after stopping smoking. We should be aiming for at least five portions of fruit and veg per day, but upwards of five to ten is fantastic. I'm briefly going to explain what a portion of fruit and vegetable actually looks like. 
So an adult portion of fruit and vegetables is roughly 80 grams per fruit or veg or three he heaped tablespoons. And this can be fresh, tinned or frozen. So cheaper alternatives still count and are often just as nutri nutritious and more convenient. So don't be too wary of them. If opting for tinned, try and go for fruit in natural juice and vegetables in water without salt. So medium fruit such as apples and bananas are typically one proportion, but smaller fruit like plums or kiwis or satsumas are often two proportion. Dried fruit is 30 grams or a small handful and fruit or vegetable juice is 150 mils. Beans and pulses are also 80 grams or three heaped tablespoons. However, beans, pulses and fruit or vegetable juice only count as one portion once a day each. So whole grains and fruit and vegetables should really make up the bulk of the whole food plant based diet. And this is really what underpins it. Our studies have shown that only 29% of adults in the UK managed to meet the recommended five a day. The advice I give will mainly revolve around increasing whole grains and fruit and veg intake. Before that, though, I'm just going to highlight the evidence for the benefits of a whole food plant based diet for good health in a bit more detail. And don't worry, I will come back to the plant based protein, vitamins and plant based dairy alternatives a bit later. So are there health benefits to a plant based diet and why does diet even matter? So the World Health Organization or the WHO state that the unhealthy diet and lack of physical activity are leading global risks to health. This is important to consider when 89% of the deaths in the UK are attributable to diseases for which poor lifestyle is a leading risk factor, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes and certain cancers. Some of the markers of these diseases highly associated with lifestyle are raised blood pressure, increased blood glucose and elevated cholesterol and obesity. The good news is that there are numerous high quality studies that show that high quality plant based diets convey good health benefits when compared to diets which include animal products. It seems the effects of the plant based diet are beneficial for multi organ systems and has benefits for organs like the heart, the pancreas, the liver, as well as keeping us healthier for longer. For example, plant based diets have a 16% lower risk of cardiovascular disease, over 30% lower risk of death from cardiovascular causes and lower risk of cardiovascular events like heart attacks generally. This is as well as a 60% lower risk of type 2 diabetes, a 21% lower risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and a 15% decreased incidence of cancer. Deaths from all causes have also consistently been found to be lower in those on a plant-based diet. But are there benefits of a plant-based diet in someone already diagnosed with a disease? High adherence to a high quality plant-based diet has also been strongly associated with improvement in markers of disease following diagnosis as well, such as weight loss, decreased cholesterol, improvement in blood sugar control. Here's a quote from Dr. T. Colin Campbell, which I think sums up these arguments nicely. It's never too late to start eating well. A good diet can reverse many of those conditions as well. In short, change the way you eat and you can transform your health for the better. So what are the challenges associated with transitioning to a plant based diet? Well, I think a study by the University of Bath summed it up quite nicely taste, price and convenience. Here's what I think are the main challenges commonly faced. Plant-based premiums. So this is a bit of a contentious one that I have referenced more thoroughly on the next page. It seems individuals really disagree about this one. Many argue that a plant-based diet is more expensive than one including animal products and some will completely disagree and say it's much cheaper. I personally think that it depends a lot on the way you eat. The main principles of the whole food plant-based diet really for me revolve around home cooking and cooking from scratch to really benefit from the whole foods. Now not everyone eats like that and some people rely more heavily on convenient ready meals or ready made sources for whatever reason. I would say that if you have a high quality diet 
with lots of high quality produce and a lot of variety and you cook mainly from scratch then I would argue that a plant-based diet is likely to be cheaper. However, if you do not rely on the cheaper, more convenient options and do not have a lot of variety in your diet, then it is definitely going to be more expensive. A recent study by Eat Better showed that plant-based alternative ready meals are much more dear on average than their animal product counterpart. This next point about investing time and money, I like to think of it like a balance or scale. It seems that when you make a change that is more cost effective, like home cooking, there is for sure a tip of the balance with a heavier time cost and vice versa. If you take a more convenient, quick option, then your expense goes up. This is quite tricky to balance. Living with others with different diets is also another challenge. And some say taste is the biggest reason for not being plant based. Social inclusivity. By this, I mean it can be an inconvenience that social gatherings that revolve around food, whether someone has cooked you a meal or you have gone out for dinner. Being stuck from, from meal ideas or not knowing where to start is another challenge. Some have fears that plant-based nutrition is incomplete and even worry about negative health effects, which I respond to more in depth later. So solutions then. As I said before, I think it's quite difficult to make suggestions without tipping the scale I mentioned in the last slide. Often changes to make something more cost-friendly requires the luxury of time. However, I have tried my best to offer some rather simple tips, which I hope some of you can find useful. To get past plant premiums, I would say to cook from scratch where you can and avoid unnecessary quantities of plant-based alternatives that can often be more expensive and not as nutritious anyway. You don't have to buy fresh all the time either. Buying tinned vegetables or frozen fruit can be much cheaper and just as nutritious. Meal prep can be so time efficient if done right. Investment of time can be helped by seeing what works in your schedule. Really identify times where you think you can spend a little longer in the kitchen to meal prep some of the food for the week and utilize the freezer. Lots of food products once cooked as well can last several days in the fridge, which is really helpful for times when you're just so busy and you just want something quick and easy you can heat up when you come in from work. If you're working from home and finding an eating pattern quite difficult, I recommend meal prepping as though you would be away from the house all day. I find it helps me be more productive throughout the day if I have my meals already planned out. So I'm not faffing around during, uh, during the day trying to make meals that are nutritious. Also trying to make cooking fun by either getting people you live with involved or playing music, a podcast can really help to integrate it into your life a bit better and make it seem less of a chore. In terms of expenses associated with changing your diet, my advice would be to buy as you go and buy items in bulk that you use a lot of, as this can be more cost effective, even though it does require a bit of investment of money um, in one go. You do not have to stock up on all new products right away, especially if you've never tried them before and might not like them. If you're living with others with different diets or regularly eat with people who do, it can be very difficult if they're not supportive. I would suggest offering to cook for them or be or bring something round that you can eat with them. If that is not possible, then out then out or they wouldn't understand um, or it would just cause too much of a conflict, then I would suggest eating more flexibly until you don't have to be. So when you're on your own, you can eat what you want. But if you go to someone's house and they've cooked a meal, then, you know, if you f if you feel OK with it, then I, I would just say maybe eat it. Taste. So a lot of the taste associated with foods containing animal products are actually caused by plant based herbs, spices. So I would stock up on all those with as long with natural flavorings and vegetable stock. Um, they can be a little bit of an investment, um, but buying them in bulk can help as well if you have the, the fortune of being able to invest a little bit of money in one go. Social inclusivity. So eating out as a vegan has become so much better in recent years. Even in the short while that I've been vegan, it's changed drastically. Most places now will have a vegan option or a vegetarian option that can be made into vegan. And 
if you don't know if, if the place you're going does do vegan, then I would look up their online menu in advance and have a look. If they don't have an online presence, then I would phone them. And if they don't offer a vegan option, I would just ask if they can provide one. It's, a, it's generally very well accepted, especially nowadays when more more is expected from the consumer. And if this isn't possible for whatever reason, then I would say suggest an alternative. Or if it's for someone else's birthday and they're really set on going somewhere, then and it's really not suitable for you, then I would just celebrate with them with them another day or in another way or something. For meal ideas, this is a difficult one because I think everyone faces meal inspiration or lack thereof at points and and my advice would be to think about what you eat already, what do you cook at the moment and just try and substitute whole food plant-based ingredients in you can steer away steer away from the the meat substitutes and things like that they're not as nutritious as we've already discussed but generally it's quite easy just to substitute whole food ingredients in place of animal products and i think if you're trying to include more variety maybe try a new recipe each week or so and there's plenty of of recipes online uh, and on youtube to help you But I heard that you need animal products to thrive. I have heard this quite a lot and it's not the case. In fact, the British Dietetics Association states well-planned plant-based diets can support healthy living at every age and life stage and advise a wide variety of healthy foods for balance and long-term sustainability. There are several key nutrients and vitamins that are commonly worried about by those transitioning from an omnivorous to a plant-based diet. And those include protein, iron, zinc, selenium, vitamin D, vitamin B12, iodine, omega-3, and 6, and also calcium. And I'm going to briefly highlight where in the plant-based diet you can get them from. And also I'm going to hint a bit and discuss the role of supplementation. All of the nutrients previously mentioned are absolutely essential for the human body to function well and can all be sourced through plant-based eating. However, some nutrients are, are a bit trickier to get, so supplementation is often recommended. And I've highlighted in green the ones that are a bit trickier to get and often recommended to supplement. So protein is easily sourced through a whole food plant-based diet, which is well balanced. And foods abundant in protein include pulses and legumes, quinoa, soya, lentils, tofu, nuts and seeds, buckwheat, just to name a few. Iron is readily found in lentils, chickpeas, beans, tofu, cashew nuts, leafy greens, dried apricots, figs and raisins and quinoa. So our absorption of iron is strongly increased by vitamin C. So consuming iron rich foods with foods high in vitamin C, like citrus fruits and bell peppers, is a very good idea. For example, eating a lentil chili containing bell peppers would really maximise your iron absorption. So zinc is found in beans, chickpeas, lentils, tofu, nuts and seeds, quinoa and wholemeal bread. And selenium is found in Brazil nuts. So two per day would give you your recommended daily intake. But if you cannot or do not eat nuts, then make sure to get some advice from a registered dietitian as controlled supplementation is important. This is to prevent you consuming too much selenium, which can be harmful for the liver. So calcium, calcium is readily available from calcium set tofu, which um, is a really good source. And a brand which is readily available from lots of supermarkets is Cauldron and they, they calcium set their tofu. Calcium fortified milk and yogurt alternatives, other fortified foods like bread and also leafy green vegetables, tahini, haricot beans and dried figs. Vitamin D. So UK guidelines actually support supplementation of 10 micrograms per day for all individuals in the UK, no matter their diet 
and some choose to continue this throughout the whole year even though UK guidelines only say that it's necessary in autumn winter. So our bodies produce vitamin D from the sunlight and that's why we often need supplementation of vitamin D in autumn and winter when there are a lot less high quality sunlight available. So vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 can be found in fortified foods. So plant-based products do not contain it unless they have been fortified. But foods that have been fortified like plant milk, cereals, nutritional yeast and marmite can be a good supply. But just make sure to check your your packaging on your food because um, it can be you might not know which ones are necessarily fortified or not so because of this supplementation is often recommended as the most consistent way to get your intake vitamin b12 is really important long term because if you're if you're not getting enough vitamin b12 in your diet daily then it can sometimes add up and you can deplete your vitamin b12 levels over a longer period of time and vitamin B12 is vital for good health. Iodine. So iodine is found in, sea, in seaweed, but the levels can be variable. So they can either be too high or too low. So nori seaweed seems to be the best. Fortified plant milks do exist, such as Alpro sweetened soy milk or Oatly original oat milk. But most are not. A supplement is suggested to be the best way to get a consistent intake. So omega-3 and 6. Omega-3 and 6 are found in seeds such as pumpkin, hemp, sunflower, linseed, flaxseed and chia seed, walnuts and rapeseed oil. So this shows that varied whole food plant-based diets are absolutely compatible with nutritional needs. So we're finally at the stage of how to implement the whole food plant-based diet based on your current diet. Like I've already said, if you are hesitant, then this does not need to be overnight. And I think the best way to do this is by targeting your fruit and veg intake first, then the whole grains, and then the animal products to really get your body adjusted to the increase in plant foods and fiber. So if you are often eating less than five portions of fruit and veg a day, then work at adding additional portions of fruit and veg into your current meals. For example, if you have a bowl of cornflakes in the morning, change that to a bowl of cornflakes in the morning with um, a glass of orange juice or other fruit juice and um, another piece of fruit like a banana or apple. Once you have managed to do that and you're now almost always managing to meet the five a day target, then try to maintain this and also substitute refined processed carbohydrates for whole grain alternatives. For example, a ham sandwich on white bread for lunch, which you've managed to add in spinach to, and you often have a side of vegetable sticks and an apple, then sub the white bread for a whole grain alternative. And then once you have managed that, and you've consistently been managing five plus portions of fruit and veg a day, and have managed to swap white for brown, where possible, then start cutting down your animal products and swap for whole food plant-based alternatives. Tips include focusing on a particular meal of the day for one to two weeks and then target other meals of the day once you are ready. For example, if you started with the cornflakes with cow's milk, then make the swap to whole grain porridge made with fortified soy milk and frozen blueberries with 150 ml of orange juice. Once you've managed that, then aim for animal product free days. Then you're ready to transition to a whole food plant based eating every day. So in summary, the number of vegans are predicted to rise considerably, which is to be celebrated. The high quality plant based diets are not only safe for people at all stages of life, but also evidence shows that they are to be encouraged for longevity of health. It's essential to get into good dietary habits early and consume a variety of nutritionally dense foods every day. And transitioning to a whole food plant based diet does not have to take place overnight. I think it's also really important to remember to be kind to yourself and allow yourself to make mistakes. Any reduction in any effort should be commended. So I will end this presentation with another quote by Dr. T. Colin Campbell, 
author of the China study. I think this quote sums up everything I've spoken about quite well and highlights the fundamental role of lifestyle for longevity of health. So what is my prescription for good health? In short, it is about the multiple health benefits of consuming plant-based foods and the largely unappreciated health dangers of consuming animal-based foods, including all types of meat, dairy and eggs. Here is just a small collection of useful resources about vegan and plant-based living, and I recommend having a good read around the topic. And these are just my references at the end here. Many thanks for listening.